Hi friends, welcome again with the new video. This is a part of video series on famous inspiring personalities and the story of their lives. If you are new to this channel, do subscribe and turn on the bell icon to get updates on new stories. The students who are listening can take the notes from your video screen. The narration which I will narrate is there on your screen. Do read it in your mind simultaneously while I narrate so that you can understand the narration clearly and it will help you in remembering. Today's story as you saw on their thumbnail is on Helen Keller, the special kid who right from her childhood till she was elderly inspired and motivated people around the globe. So how was her life journey? Let us know now. Let's begin with her biography and life story. You can start reading from the text on your screens. Helen Keller was an American author, political activist and a campaigner for deaf and blind charities. Helen became deaf and blind as a young child and had to struggle to overcome her dual disability. However, she became the first deaf blind person to attend bachelor's degree and became an influential campaigner for social, political and disability issues. Her public profile helped destigmatize blindness and deafness and she was seen as a powerful example of someone overcoming difficult circumstances. Let's see one of her quotes from On Optimism in 1903. Once I knew the depth where no hope was and darkness lay on the face of all things, then love came and set my soul free. Once I knew only darkness and stillness, now I hope and joy. Helen Keller's Early Life Helen Keller was the first of two daughters born to Arthur H. Keller and Catherine Adams Keller. She also had two older stepbrothers. Keller's father had served as an officer in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. The family was not particularly wealthy and earned income from their cotton plantation. Later, Arthur became the editor of a weekly local newspaper, The North Albemian. The North Albemian. Keller was born with her senses of sight and hearing and started speaking when she was just six months old. She started walking at the age of one. Process of loss of sight and hearing. In 1882, however, Keller contracted an illness called brain fever by the family doctor that produced a high body temperature. The true nature of the illness remains a mystery today. Though some experts believe it might have been scarlet fever or meningitis within a few days after the fever broke, Keller's mother noticed that her daughter didn't show any reaction when the dinner bell was rung or when a hand was waved in front of her face. Keller had lost both her sight and hearing. She was just 19 months old that time. As Keller grew into childhood, she developed a limited method of communication with her companion, Martha Washington, the young daughter of the family cook. The two had created a type of sign language and by the time Keller was seven, they had invented more than 60 signs to communicate with each other. But Keller had become very wild and unruly during this time. She would kick and scream when angry and giggle uncontrollably when happy. She tormented Martha and inflicted raging tantrums on her parents. Many family relatives felt she would be institutionalized. Here is a photo of Annie Subillian and Helen Keller on March 3rd, 1887 at the Keller household in Tuscumbia, Alabama to work with Helen Keller. Annie brought a doll for Helen as a gift but immediately started manually spelling D-O-L-L in her ha hand. Annie Subillian, her friend and mentor. Looking for answers and inspiring, in 1886, Keller's mother came across a travelogue by Charles Dickens, American Notes. She read of the successful education of another deaf and blind child, Laura Bridman, and soon dispatched Keller and her father to Baltimore, Maryland, to see specialist Dr. J. Julian Chisholm. After examining Keller, Chisholm recommended that she see Alexander Graham Bell. Yeah, the same inventor of the telephone, the same Graham Bell, who was working with deaf children at that time. Bell met with Keller and her parents and suggested that they travel to Perkins Institute for the Blind in Boston, Massachusetts. There the family met with the school's director, Michael Anagnos, 
he suggested Helen work with one of the institute's most recent graduates, Annie Sullivan, and so began a 49-year relationship between teacher and pupil. Here we can see Annie Sul Sullivan in this photo. Here on the left is Helen, on the right is Annie. This is the photo of Alexander Graham Bell and Helen Keller, where Ale Alexander Graham Bell spent the 1870s working on hearing devices for the deaf. Helen Keller's par parents reached out to him when Helen was a child and he turn contracted the Perkins Institute. The Perkins Institute then sent Annie Sullivan to work with Helen. On March 3, 1887, Sullivan went to Keller's home in Alabama and immediately went to work. She began by teaching six-year-old Helen finger spellings, starting with the word doll, to help Keller understand the gift of a doll she had brought along. Other words would follow. At first, Keller was curious, then defiant, refusing to cooperate with Sullivan's instruction. Kids and the viewers, you can imagine and you can remember your childhood when in the beginning you were supposed to learn from alphabets A to Z, numbers 1 to 10 and making the spellings, how difficult and how tedious and how bad we used to feel to even attend those classes. But if you remember the children who are in special schools, you can imagine how difficult it will be them for them to even learn and what the teachers would be going through each individual child to teach them all the knowledge. So that really we should one respect one salute should go to all the teachers who are teaching them and all the parents who are also teaching their kids when keller did cooperate sullivan would could tell that she wasn't making the connection between the objects and the letters spelled out in her hand sullivan kept working at it forcing helen to go through the regime as keller's frustration grew the tantrums increased finally sullivan demanded that she and keller be isolated from the rest of the family for a time, so that Keller could concentrate only on Sullivan's instruction. They moved to a cottage on the plantation. Here in this photo we can see Anna Sullivan's initial approach of, to teaching. Helen was to place an object in one, one of Helen's hands while manually spelling the word in the other. This was the way Helen learned words and their meaning. So all what she learned was from the senses and the feelings and the smells and using all the senses other than eyes. You can imagine the world which kids like Helen would create in their eyes. The things which we see and we consider them as beautiful or ugly or as artistic. You can imagine how those special kids would be imagining those things. The beauty which we consider as for ourselves, what will be the definition of beauty for those kids? This is really a thoughtful process. In a dramatic struggle, Sullivan taught Keller the word water. She helped her make the connection between the object and the letters by talking Keller out to the water pump and placing Keller's hand under the spout. While Sullivan moved the lever to flush cool water over Keller's hand, she spelled out the word water, W-A-T-E-R, on Helen's other hand. Keller understood and repeated the word in Sullivan's hand. She then pounded the ground, demanding to know its letter name. Sullivan followed her, spelling out the word into her hand. Keller moved to other objects with Sullivan in tow. By nightfall, she had learned 30 words. By this, you can see how Helen would have been excited to know the meaning of the words to know the meaning of the objects which she is touching, to know the spellings, to able to communicate in one way, even by through less vocabularies. You can just imagine how happy she would be now. Helen Keller's formal education. In 1890s, Keller began speech class at the Horace Mann School for the deaf in Boston. She would toil for 25 years to learn to speak so that others could understand her. From 1894 to 1896, she attended Wright Humason School for Deaf in New York City. 
There she worked on improving her communication skills and studied regular academic subjects. Here is the photo of Helen Keller graduated from Radcliffe College. While in college she began writing her memoir, The Story of My Life. And the story of my life was so famous which we can discuss in our next narration. Around this time Keller became determined to attend college. In 1896 she attended the Cambridge School for Young Ladies, a preparatory school for women, as her st story became known to the general public. Keller began to meet famous and influential people. One of them was the writer Mark Twain, who was very impressed with her. They became friends. Twain introduced her to his friend Henry H. Rogers, a standard oil executive. Rogers was so impressed with Keller's talent, drive and determination that he agreed to pay for her to attend Radcliffe College. There she was accompanied by Sullivan, who sat by her side, interpret lectures and te texts. You can imagine the life of not only just Helen Keller but also Sullivan who was every time and moment was next to her and she was the eyes of Helen Keller whenever she was needed. To explain in the class full of people the texts and the write-ups and, and Helen to understand everything and everything going on simultaneously, it's really a task which n not everybody can do. So it's a, it's a salute for both the people. Here we can see photo where Mark Twain asserted that Helen Keller and Napoleon Bonaparte were the most interesting people to come out of the 19th century. He often met with Helen and helped arrange funding for her college education. Process of learning to communicate. In the beginning, Keller was frustrated by her inability to pick up the hand signals that Sullivan was giving. However, after a frustrating month, Keller picked up on a Sullivan system of hand signals through understanding the word water. Sullivan poured water over Keller's left hand and wrote out on her right hand the word water. This helped Helen to fully understand the system and she was soon able to identify a variety of household objects. Here we can see from the quote from Helen of Helen Keller from the story of my life 1903 chapter 4. The quote says, the most important day I remember in my in all my life is the one on which my teacher Annie Manusfeld Sullivan came to me. I am filled with wonder when I consider the Im immeasurable contrasts between the two lives which it connects. It was the 3rd of March 1887, three months before I was seven years old. Keller made rapid progress and quickly overcome her bad habits. She became proficient in braille and was able to begin a fruitful education. Despite her disability, Keller made more progress than anyone expected. She would later learn to write with braille typewriter. As you all must be knowing, braille is a script in which the people who can't see or the blind people use for reading and writing. Braille script we can see even used in currency notes or on public transports or in places uh, which are related to uh, transport or public places so that people of all types can understand. Keller came into contact with American author Mark Twain. Twain admired the pers perseverance of Keller and helped persuade Henry Rogers, an oil businessman, to fund her education, as said earlier. With great difficulty, Keller was able to study at Radcliffe College, where in 1904, she was able to graduate with Bachelor of Arts degree. During her education, she also learned to speak and practice lip reading. Her sense of touch became extremely subtle. She also found that deafness and blindness encouraged her to develop wisdom and understand from beyond the senses. Here in this photo, we can see how she was able to understand. Able to feel vibrations of the throat, Helen learned to speak by placing one hand on person's throat and the other on the mouth. Even remotely imagining this process, if you try to do right now, to keep your hand on someone's throat and the other hand someone's mouth and to read the lip movements and imagine you can't hear. Just by vibrations and by the lip movements you are able to predict the word or the sentences which people are talking it is a miracle which not everyone can do it this is what i feel in one of helen keller's quotes from the five sense world the quote says we differ blind 
and seeing, while from another not in our senses but in the use we make of them, in the imagination and courage with which we seek wisdom beyond the senses. Keller became a profession writer and speaker. In 1903, she published an autobiography, The Story of My Life. It re recounted her struggles to overcome her disabilities and the way it forced her to look at life from a different perspective. One more of Helen Keller Keller's quote, when one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one which has been opened for us. Yes, this students and viewers, this we have seen in our own life too. We just concentrate on the things which we don't have or we concentrate on the things which we have lost. But we should overcome it and we have to see what we can do in that place rather than just thinking about what has happened and from whom we can learn much better way than Helen Keller. Portrait of American author and lecturer Helen Keller. Keller who was deaf, blind and mute wrote the miracle work the Miracle Worker. Her book, The Story of My Life. By this time, Keller had mastered several methods of communication, including touch, leap, reading, braille, speech typing, and finger spelling. With the help of Sullivan and Sullivan's future husband, John McKay, Keller wrote her first book, The Story of My Life. It covered her transformation from childhood to 21 year old college student. Keller graduated cum laude from Radcliffe in 1904 at the age of 24. Here in this photo we can see Helen and Annette travel the world involving themselves in many social causes and meeting famous leaders. Helen Keller helped start, helped start the ACLU and was a known suffragist earning her reputation at the time as a political radical. In 1905 Sullivan married John McKay as an instructor at Harvard University, a social critic and a prominent socialist. After the marriage, Sullivan continued to be Keller's guide and mentor. When Keller went to live with McKay, they both initially gave Keller their undivided attention. Gradually, however, Annie and John became distant to each other. As Annie's devotion to Keller continued unbated, after several years, the couple separated, though were never divorced. Let us again look in brief about the story of Helen Keller. Helen Keller was born on 27 June 1880 in Tuscumbia, Alabama. When she was only 19 months old, she experienced a severe childhood illness which left her deaf and blind. Only a very partial sight. For the first few years of his, her life, she was able to communicate with her family through a rudimentary number of signs. She had a little more success communicating with the six-year-old daughter of the family cook. However, unable to communicate properly, she was considered to be badly behaved. For example, eating from the plates of anyone on the table with her fingers. In 1886, Helen was sent to see an eye, ear and nose specialist in Baltimore. He put them in touch with Alexander Graham Bell, who was currently investigating issues of deafness and sound. He would also develop the first telephone, as we all know. Bell was moved by the experience of working with Kellers writing that, quotes, I feel that in this child I have seen more of the divine than has been manifest in anyone I have ever met before. Alexander Bell helped Keller to visit the Perkins Institute for the Blind and this led to a long relationship with Annie Sullivan who was, who was a former student herself. Sullivan was visually impaired and aged only 20 and with no prior experience she set about teaching Helen how to communicate. The two maintain a long relationship of 49 years. Here in this photo we can see President Calvin College and his wife Grace who are lifelong advocates for deaf children. Helen Keller often met with the president to help raise money and awareness for various foundations. Helen Keller's social activism. After college, Keller set out to learn more about the world and how she could help improve the life of others. News of her story spread beyond Massachusetts and New England. She became a well-known celebrity and lecturer by sharing her experiences with audiences and working on beliefs of others living with disabilities. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, Keller tackled social and political issues including women, suffrage, pacifism and birth control. She testified before Congress strongly advocating to improve the welfare of blind people. 
in 1915 along with renowned renowned city planner George Kessler she co-founded Helen Keller International to combat the causes and consequences of blindness and malnutrition in 1920s she helped found the American Civil Liberties Union here in this photo we can see Helen Keller where she often visited various schools for the blind to work with children here she is reading braille with students in switzerland when the american federation for the blind was established in 1921 keller had an effective national outlet for her efforts she became a member in 1924 and participated in many campaigns to raise awareness money and support for the blind she also joined other organizations dedicated to help those less fortunate including the permanent blind war relief fund later called the american braille press Soon after she graduated from college, Keller became a member of the Socialist Party, most likely due in part of her friendship with John McCain between 1909 and 1921. She wrote several articles about socialism and supported Yoon Debs, a Social Party presidential candidate. Her series of essays on socialism entitled Out of the Dark describe her views on socialism and world affairs. It was during this time that Keller's first experience public prejudice about her disabilities for most of her life. The press had been overwhelmingly supportive of her, praising her courage and intelligence. But after she expressed her socialist views, some criticized her by calling attention to her disabilities. One newspaper, the Brooklyn Eagle, wrote that her mistakes plunge out the manifest limitations of her development. In this photo, we can see Helen Keller met with George Bernard Shaw at Ladies Esters. in 1932 he told her how much he admired her writing not realizing at first that she was deaf and blind true whenever as a human being when we read someone's writing and someone's talks we can't even imagine if the person is having any uh, disabilities so here looking at the writings of helen keller hardly anyone could think that she is having a difficulty in uh, communicating Helen Keller's work and influence in 1936 Keller's beloved teacher and devoted companion Annie Sullivan died she had experienced health problems for several years and in 1932 lost her eyesight completely a young woman named Polly Thompson who had begun working as a secretary for Keller and Sullivan in 1914 became Keller's constant companion upon Sullivan's death. In 1946, Keller was appointed counselor of international relations for the American Foundation of Overseas Blind. Between 1946 and 1957, she traveled to 35 countries on five continents. In 1955, at age 75, Keller embarked on the longest and most grueling trip of her life, a 40,000-mile five-month trek across Asia. Through her many speeches and appearances she brought inspiring and encouragement to millions of people indeed if you see the person with lot of disabilities considered by humans if she can work so hard why some people complain in working hard helen keller was with frank sinatra in 1944 in this photo helen keller political views Keller also wrote on political issue. Keller was a staunch supporter of the so American Socialist Party and joined the party in 1909. She wished to see a fairer distribution of income and an end to the inequality of capitalist society. She said she became a more convinced socialist after the 1912 miners strike. Her book Out of the Dark of 1913 included includes several essays on socialism. She supported Eugene V. Debs in each of the presidential elections he stood for. In 1912 she joined the Industrial Workers of the World IWW as well as advocating socialism. Keller was a pacifist and opposed the American involvement in World War 1. Here in this photo we can see President Eisenhower met with Helen Keller throughout the 1950s to discuss aid efforts for soldiers blinded in World War 2. Helen Keller religious views In the religious matter she advocated the teachings of Emanuel Swedenborg a Christian theologian who advocated a particular spiritual interpretation of the Bible she published My Religion in 1927 Here in this photo we can see 
she is enthusiastic about reading and writing and she has written many articles and 12 books so i suggest do read at least few of these books and articles helen keller's charity work from 1918 she devoted much of her time to raising funds and awareness for blind charities she sought to raise money and also improve the living conditions of the blind who at the, the time were often badly educated and living in asylums her public profile helped to destigmatize blindness and deafness she was also noted for optimism which she sought to cultivate from helen keller's <coughs> optimism quotes if i am happy in spite of my deprivations if my happiness is so deep that it's my, it's a faith so thoughtful that it becomes a philosophy of life if in short i am an optimist my testimony to the creed of optimism is worth hearing towards the end of her life she suffered a stroke and she died to her sleep on june 1 1968 she was given numerous awards during her life including the presidential medal of freedom in 1964 by lyndon b johnson Here in this photo we can see Patty Duke who won both a Tony award and an Oscar for playing Helen Keller in The Miracle Worker. So let's know about the movie made on Helen Keller, The Miracle Worker. Keller's autobiography The Story of My Life was used as the basis for 1957 television drama The Miracle Worker. In 1959 the story was developed into Broadway play of the same title. starring Patty Duke as Keller and Annie Brancoff as Sullivan. The two actresses also performed those roles in 1962 award win- winning film version of the play. This is a portrait of blind American author and educator Helen Keller. She received several awards and honors. So let's see at them. Keller suffered a series of strokes in 1961 and spent the remaining years of her life at her home in C- Connecticut. During her lifetime, she received many honors and in recognition of her accomplishment, including the Theodore Roosevelt Distinguished Service Medal in 1936, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1964, and election to the Women's Hall of Fame in 1965. She also received honorary doctorate, doctoral degrees from Temple University and Harvard University, and from the universities of Glasgow, Scotland, Berlin, Germany, Delhi, India, and with words. with waters ran in educational institute of scotland so let's know how and when did helen keller die keller died in her sleep on june 1 1968 just a few weeks before her 88th birthday during her remarkable life keller stood as a powerful example of how determination hard work and imagination can allow an individual to triumph over adversity by overcoming difficult conditions with a great deal of persistence She grew into a respected and world-renowned activi- activist who labored for the betterment of others. In this photo, at last we can see Helen Keller, who lacked the senses of sight and hearing. So here she is used highly developed senses of touch and smell in order to comprehend the world. She died on June first, nineteen sixty-eight, at the age of eighty-seven. As said before, just few weeks before her eighty-eighth birthday. So this was the life journey of Helen Keller, the person who is admired and followed by all. Her ever learning attitude and never giving up lifestyle makes every individual small in front of her. Her photos, movies made on her life, and books written on her journey are must see for people from all walks of life. They say when we look at a glass filled with half water in it, it is our mind and our decision to see if the glass is considered half filled or if the glass is considered completely filled completely filled 100% by both water by 50% and air by 50% so it is up to us if we will see life as lesser by some things or complete by many things with this note i would like to end this story and i want to suggest all the viewers to subscribe the vi- for the channel and to like this video as you like this video it motivates me in making more such videos and if you share this video with your friends it will help us to grow our family more 
so i would like to thank everyone for listening the story the students can reverse the video and get their notes done you can copy the write up from the video and you can make the notes for your homeworks or for your projects and the other viewers who are watching it for listening as a story they can share also with their friends who like to hear the stories thank you very much and have a nice day